parental discretion is advised. Cover all that. We've got a crap load of fan mail. We've got the freight train and the blue meanie. You're going to want to stick around for this one, folks. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. Wait for the perfect time to attack. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's a wrestling mayhem show. Proof. That the entire crowd of 16,000 people are more musically inclined and coordinated than the four of us on Skype uh, across the country. That's right. I'm a Sorgatron uh, here coming to you from Pittsburgh in the Mayhem Studios. Uh, fresh off, uh, holy crap, uh, kind of weekend. Wrestling. Uh, but we, wrestling and the mania of which that happened. We have so much to bring you, including interviews, uh, within this very show, uh, that we talked with, uh, uh, the Blue Meanie, One Freight Train, and yes, also a very did. special interview with Bill After, uh, to, uh, talk about the Montreal Theory just released. But uh, before that, let's get into our panel for tonight. The very excited everybody had their WrestleMania orgasm over the weekend, and we're gonna get right into that. But we have, of course, Papa Lunchbox. <laughs> What's up, folks? It is DJ Lunchbox, a.k.a. Papa Lunchbox. I'm your vehicle woman. I'll take you anywhere you want to go. I am the founding member of Tears for Fears, and I'm here to fuck you in the ears with my beautiful, sweet, sultry, sensuous radio personality. Mm. I just came. Oh, and also somebody else. You're not the only one. Not the only one. And somebody else uh, familiar with premature orgasm is the Wrestle fan from San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I am apparently familiar with that. Thanks, Zorg, you could, you for having me. You're, you're in college you on it. my sexual, you know, You're in college. Prowess. You know, but no, uh, thank you for that intro, Zorg. Uh, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show Night. I'm excited. My WrestleMania boner is still running strong, and it's 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 got no signs of stopping. And its name is Fandango. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, ACH. Also joining us fresh off uh, himself, the Steel City Con, uh, the Riz. I got to hug people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why did you hug as people? Creepy as you sound, as it sounds. <laughs> Why were it's you hugging creepy. people? Because I had the uh, hug it out shirt. Mm-hmm. The the hand the one that looks like a handwritten Daniel Bryan and Kane shirt. Nice. And I had a sign on my back that says, "Hey, I got a newsletter right here, and also I'm giving away free hugs. <laughs> Nobody turns away free hugs. There Nobody." You go. There you go. And, of course, this is your Wrestling Mayhem show where we like to just talk wrestling and be ridiculous and have some fun, guys. We're fans. This is what we're here to do, right? This is why we're into this whole thing. Of yeah. course, you can check out more at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including uh, Mr. Mad Mike's uh, uh, TNA Impact uh, reviews, other articles once we have an inkling to do it, and other links <laughs> and ways to contact us and other stuff going on in the Mayhem universe. Where can you contact us, Sorg? Uh, well, they can contact us after they've found the rest of our episodes over at iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, Blip TV, Roku, and the YouTube in video and audio formats. And you then to, you have to find us in all of those outlets. And then they're so inclined, they can drop us a line at Good Times. Better than Fandango at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. Or you can also buy the app like the Riz has right there for your iOS or Android oh, device. $1.99. Oh, Very no, ready. There it is. There it comes. It's loaded. I, was, I wasn't ready, Sorg. There it is. A very special bonus content with each episode. This episode is apparently going to feature a uh, improv, the ongoing improv series with uh, Launchbox and WrestleFan. I think um, we're going to open a school eventually. Do you, do you guys have a name yet? Not yet. 
The Mayhem oh. players. Send send your suggested name for me and Lunchbox Improv oh Crew to Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow <laughs> we, we could be we could be the not quite ready for Mayhem players. This <laughs> 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 is a joke. Wrestle fans is not old enough to get. Nope, nope but nope. I'll I'll go with it anyways. It sounds funny. Go look up on Wikipedia. But let's start the show the only way we know how. Let's get right into the fan mail for this week, guys. What's up first? What's on deck? Who's on hmm. first? Nobody was prepared. Nobody's prepared. Uh, I'm prepared. I, I, I got them prepared. all ready here. You got them all ready there? You got all two, three of them. Wow, there's three of them now. There's like five there's now. There's like five now. Where did all these come from? Holy there's crap. Five. And they're there kind of five. long. Uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. There's, there's do it. five of them, and they're kind of long. <laughs> oh, no. Here it's we go. Like WrestleMania weekend. That's fine. This is their WrestleMania talk. They can go. Oh, what you got? You got it? Go. Ready? Yeah. Yep. Hey, Mayhemers. Do, 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 do. Sorg asked, so here's some mania feedback. I thought the undercard was really solid up until Del Rio Swagger. Punk Undertaker was amazing, far beyond my expectations. Great story, bit of a throwback feel with the urn. Did you notice Taker couldn't beat Punk until Heyman lost the urn? Supernatural! Triple H Brock was fine, but probably hurt by the build. I just don't think fans have much sympathy for Triple H or care what happens to him. Hmm. Roxena was just weird. After two plus years of build, the match should have been amazing, but it felt flat to me. They just seemed to go through the motions. The video game analogy I've been hearing definitely applies. Raw last night was rad. I jumped off my couch for Barrett's win and Ziggler's cash in. Uh, crowd was great. I understand those who didn't like the antics, but it's fine for one night. Singing along with Fandango's music could get annoying after a few months. We'll see. Have a good show. You're a mainstream media pal, Matt Carlins. There he is. Yep, and I think we're going to have a lot more commentary about a few of those items there. Like, do, do, do. Hey, man, peeps. It is I, Zero2K. Hello. Holy dang, what a week. Hmm. Holy I'm guessing dang. there will be a bunch of fan mail and a whole lot to talk about this week. Yes and yes. Uh, so let's keep it short. I'm glad somebody did. Uh, this last week was totally National Wrestling Week. So much has happened and changed in the last days. Jay Briscoe shocks ROH in the world. What happened there? Uh, we'll get to oh, it. Okay, okay. Jerry and Melissa finally recaptures the Shimmer title. AR Fox crowned the first ever Evolve Championship. ROH and Evolve don't know how to use technology. Jushin Liger returns to Chikara. Grizzly Ra- uh, Side note, I saw a very, well, very good uh, Jushin Liger and John Morrison match over the weekend. Uh, Jushin Liger... No, I read that one. Grizzly Redwood sa- shaves his beard. I think he got fired, too, didn't he? And he got fired. Uh, <laughs> Stop, I wonder if they're Stop right there. What? That's our indie minute. Yeah, that is our indie minute. It's good. zero's no, indie minute, and stuff. it was actually a minute. So nope, fuck you. It's a minute. <laughs> Okay. And there was WWE. Well, then you fucked up all our transitions, Riz. WrestleMania kind of sucked, <laughs> in my opinion, aside from the three main events, Lesnar and Trips, and uh, the solid MOTN. Wait. Match of the night. Oh, thank you. I, I'm sorry. I'm thinking Masters of the Universe for some you reason. You need to learn internet speak. <laughs> I need to learn the internets. What's YOLO? <laughs> Kudos to Brock for fighting all that all that match with a concussion. Wow. And then Raw with a great crowd, good matches, and Dolph fucking Ziggler. Did you hear that, Pop? Did you? Glad to see how Raw moved uh, last night. Uh, feuds ending. Feuds starting. And it seems Cena may indeed start a healing process in ah. the coming weeks if he is to fight the Ryback at... At ER, ER is ah. stream rules. Uh, uh, no, Raw that, that show with uh, George Clooney. George Clooney, yeah, yeah. No, Wiley. I want to. Who who else wants library. to see Ryback on ER? Oh my god, that <laughs> would be amazing. <laughs> stat, <laughs> stat, feed it more, years. stat. Feed um, it more. <laughs> but BT Dub. Uh, wait, did I? Oh, Raw <laughs> after WrestleMania are usually good, so let's hope they keep this momentum going. BT Dub, that TNA one night only extravaganza pay per view, pay per view. Uh, it's good, worth watching. Go and check it out. Ahem, ahem. Tarara, ta ta, tarara, tarara, ta ta. I th- I, I'm sate reading this. Tarara, tarara, ta ta, tarara, ra. 
Yes. Uh, Later's Mayhem Zero out sent from my PC computer. Ta ra ra ta 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 ra ra ta ra ra. Ta. You get the idea. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. So th- yeah, the indie wrestling. I, it's amazing. I was in the presence of a lot of the things he mentioned, yet did not see them. Um, it was. I saw the top of the cage. <laughs> and and like feet flipping, I actually and I saw a facade spot on the on the ladder fray, but we'll we'll get into that. Uh, uh, we have another email. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hello, you ten lie. percenters. Hello, other ninety percent. Hi, Bruce, uh, including you. It's your boy Alex Cars with a quick look at the past week at pro wrestling. WrestleCon seems like it was a blast for all involved, minus some major IP per view problems. I'm looking at you, Evolve. I'm on the mind that video on demand is possibly the better option, say this point. But on the flip side, I read that CZW had the best feed of the night. Kudos to them and RF Video. WrestleMania. Some people hated it, others liked it. I, for one, enjoyed it. I found very little that was horribly wrong with it. Maybe I'm just easily sports entertained. I don't know. Match of the Night for me was... <laughs> under- I like awesome. that. I went, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, match of the Night for me was Undertaker versus CM Punk, with the six-man opener being a close second. The stuff on Triple H's body during his entrance was Ico Pro. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Raw is crowd reaction. I think Fandango's music is a million times more over than he is at the moment. Man, what a crowd. And yes, Dolph is here to show the world and then some. I'm glad they seem to be going the route of Ryback versus Cena because, because given how the rumble ended, it makes sense. Well, that about does it for me. this email. Can't wait for another exciting mayhem. Don't forget to drop by Occupy Pro Wrestling's Facebook page to find out how to get in on our predictions league. Take care. Do very Various things with your hair. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, various things. LB, I think you have a very special one up Jizz next. on it. I do. I do. Ready? Mm-hmm. Go for it. <clears throat> hey. 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 It's me. It's me. It's the motherfucking fan of the year. It's at Big PPC. WrestleMania. So, it was the most predictable WrestleMania ever. Team Hill knows fantastic. The Shield was great. Big Show knocked out Orton and Sheamus and destroyed Orton on Raw. Fan fucking T-Stick. Fondongo versus Jericho was interesting for sure. Jericho been putting people over since he put John Cena over in his first big win like 10 years ago on SmackDown when Cena wore tights. Facts, damn it! I already said what? this, but Daniel Bryan and Kane are amazing but need to break up. The crowd Mania and Raw were fucking great as well. Made it fantastic to watch. Wade Barrett versus Miz got the title in less than 24 hours. The Barrett Barrage ran supreme and Wade Barrett regains the title back against Miz. Barrett fucking British. CM Punk vs. Undertaker at WrestleMania was amazing. Assuming everyone knew Undertaker would win, CM Punk brought the best of the dead man. Future Hall of Famers in the ring together tonight. Does Punk take time off now? Time will tell. Santino, Zack Ryder and R-Truth came out from under the rock for a match against 3MB. And Satino actually won the match, which means Ryder and Truth won too. Woo woo woo! You did it, bro! Insert sarcasm here. Best crowd ever since last year. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Big Show needs to practice throwing chairs in the ring. Fandongo got his ass handed to him by Jericho. The crowd actually did find Bongo's team during the match. That's crazy. Crazy. Awesome. Questions. So what would your favorite food feud coming up <laughs> be that you would want? Uh, was your favorite WrestleMania... No. Was your favorite moment at WrestleMania or Raw after WrestleMania? Personally. Got a love Ziggler winning and Ryback turning. Hopefully it's a good thing. I do not have the breath of... 
I do not have the breath of a thousand asses. I enjoy this beginning of Raw with John Cena and Mark Henry indeed. If you can check out TNA One Night Only Extravaganza Exhibition theme pay-per-view this month. Good stuff. Pete Williams, Mojo, Austin Eddies, Matt Bentley, and many more great stuff. Till next time, Mayhem Crew, take care. Don't spike your hair. And please, God, wear underwear. It's me. It's me. It's it. Big Pip C. Fan of the Year. Sent from Maffin. What is with everybody doing the freaking sent or the uh, take care, do something weird with your hair? Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. Like, two the theme. What? Or like, is that our theme now? Or I think we were everyone was excited because the uh, uh, writer was actually on TV. Nobody's Who excited. would be excited about that? The only person excited for that was Zack Ryder. Because <laughs> he could spend a night where he's not just eating catering. Oh, eating catering. No. Ooh, be, oh, I could go for some cake. We got one more, I believe. Hold on. I lost what? it. Wait, we have questions. What? Oh, we have questions before it's we questions. get to that one. What would your favorite feud coming up be that you would want? <clears throat> I don't get it. Uh, it's, upcoming, it seems what like two questions. What's you your favorite feud coming up, and what feud would you want to see? What do you want? To, what do you want to happen here out of May, uh, out of Mania, or what do you see coming that that, that you're excited for? Uh, I have I have one that's the uh, answer for both of those questions. Uh, Del Rio Ziggler, because that is going to be fucking amazing. I swear to God, I said it in the Hangout. They gave those guys what three minutes last night because yeah. of the whole thing and it was phenomenal that might be the best uh uh surprise money in the bank defense uh yeah. i think i've seen and i think uh i can't remember someone some uh, wrestler tweeted about it um they spent they took three minutes and they put part of that is the fact that we've been waiting for so long for ziggler to cash in and there are so many points where we're like, this is the time. This is the time. Oh, you know, I mean, like, like, like seriously, like, 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 seriously, I, and I mean, you guys probably have the reaction at home, but sitting there in Mania and, and like, we're like, oh, everybody's, you know, Channing Ziggler waiting, waiting. And then it goes dark to the next promo. And we're like, you heard the entire 80,000 people going, oh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, yeah. it's like tantric sex. <laughs> it's just like tantric sex. You almost come and then you back off and then you almost come and then you back off and you do that enough um, almost for an entire year and you come close to coming and someone hits you in your head with your own briefcase. Uh, and then finally <laughs> when you get to come, it's amazing. It's the best thing in the world. And that, that I think that uh, was Dolph Ziggler cashing in last night. So if you guys missed it here on the show, we just <laughs> compared Dolph Ziggler's Money in the Bay cash into ejaculation. Uh, we we are highbrow shit. We can't be the only wrestling show that's done. No, we can't do that. I really think we are. No, I, I, to- then, I totally you know what? doubt that. Then fuck the other wrestling shows. <laughs> fuck them and not in a nice way where they get to come in a great way like Dolph Ziggler cashing in. Fuck them. They're behind the times. You hear that other wrestling shows, other fucking wrestling podcasts, you're pieces of shit and you're Wait, fucking, are we-, we are fucking better than you. Are we Dirty Sanchezing them right now? Yes. Yes. Which one's the Dirty Sanchez? Is that, is that, oh, that's the, the, that's the, 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 the shit mustache. mustache with paint with your cock. We're doing yeah. that. We're giving him a rusty trombone. We're punching him in the back of the head and saying, tighten up. <laughs> because you can't fucking compete with us. Right. You can't fucking even come close to the majesty, the greatness that is the Wrestling Mayhem show. You can try. You can make all kinds of noise, but you're just a little dog scratching at the fucking screen door outside. And we're the whole house, motherfucker. We're the whole believe, house. B- believe in the mayhem. Believe in the mayhem. I love your dog analogy. <laughs> believe <laughs> amazing. the mayhem. I haven't cut a good promo in a while. That was good. Go uh, on. That, What's, that, that was good. That was good. I'm rock hard. <laughs> Sorg, you audio listeners can't hear it, but Sorg made the best face. I have an email. I have an email, please. Um, we have an email. What the hell? I have another email that has a question mark. Um, question mark. I, you, uh, greetings, Mayhemers. Greetings. 
follow that. It's that guy who watched all of Mania be unfurled and then screamed as Doc Ziggler showed the world his mad gut. And Mike, okay, so I was going to make this a video, but it wound up being way too long. So here's a quick wrap up of my weekend in entail. Thursday afternoon, I participated in the hashtag hide and tweet with Mick Foley to try and score some extra Mania tickets. And while I didn't get the tickets, I did get to meet Foley, who was a super awesome. Uh, he was uh, commentating uh, on a match that was uh, screening in the bowling alley. Uh, Saturday afternoon was access at the IZOD Center. Uh, access was fun, but if you've ever been to Comic-Con, try limiting all the things you do there into a five-hour limit. Uh, granted, the things I did get to do were a lot of fun, but having time limit on each session of access is a little frustrating. Uh, we wanted to get Bear's autograph, but the line was too long, uh, so we settled for Michael McGillicuddy. Hmm. That's a good choice. But it was still one day, you know. Uh, McGillicuddy had amazing <laughs> matches on a show no one watched. You know, that's getting that's getting uh, Nobody cares. that's getting closer to perfection. Uh, what I was nice was while waiting for the autographs, they sat you in, uh, in the arena so you could watch the NXT matches. Well, wow, that was pretty cool. What's NXT? Who's opening what? shit? What, what the? What, this what is, is a professional podcast. And we're just opening what quickly no, shit in the fan. middle of Mad Mike's fan. interview. Fucking okay, tell me. Man. What the shit man. is going on? Wrestle fan. Buzzbox was the one eating Thin Mints last week. Yeah, yeah that's, I don't have. That's it's different. empty. I've got no Thin Mints left. Well, stop what playing with the empty? rapper then. <laughs> that's sorrow. That's, that's what sorrow looks like. Empty Thin Mints. <laughs> hmm. Anyways. Where Make was I? Noises. <clears throat> Sorg. So you can watch the NXT matches. We saw Pac, uh, Ono, <laughs> SJK, Xavier, and Cesario all wrestle, and a great promo oh, by yeah. Heyman and Punk. The photo ops were also great, which I will post on the Mayhem Show Facebook page. Sweet. Saturday night was the Hall of Fame, which went well over three hours long. I've seen all the Hall of Fame ceremonies since 04, and I may be biased, but this one was the best. Uh, Foley was amazing. Twitch was hilarious. Booker was great. Vincent Arnold was tremendous. Backlund was just godly. I felt bad for the reaction Maria Menounos got, and Bruno just told some amazing stories. Sunday night was Mania, obviously, which was very solid show, just overly predictable. Punk Taker was easily the highlight, but Shield and Henry winning were great. And the crowd was louder than it seemed on the broadcast, methinks. I have not seen any of the broadcast stuff yet, so I cannot compare. It, it was not bad. Uh, Raw was, well, it was just fantastic. It really was. The rest about Raw is in the minute. Overall, I gave Vince a whole lot of money <coughs> this weekend, but it was the best time I've had in a long time. White Alchemist, ending transmission. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, Mike and I both uh, attended the WrestleMania <clears throat> uh, and such. Uh, he attended much more than I did, but I have more of the uh, WrestleCon side of things, which I suppose we'll talk about in the Indie Minute uh, more than anything. Uh, so, and maybe a little bit more later, too. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Any commentary there, guys? Um, I, I, want, I want to see the access so bad. You know, just see what that's like and everything. It seems super fun. It, it seems like the, that's the way to do it. And, and I think that's going to be the plan next year because, uh, God, I'm addicted to this now. <laughs> like, I, I can't imagine not going to WrestleMania next year. The first thing, Because of my well, all-together experience, you know? You, you mentioned Axis, and the only thing that, like, honestly popped into my mind was the video that came out about uh, Biggie Langston getting a customized My Little Pony. Um, and that was fucking phenomenal. But, that you know, that's I, I think that's amazing with Access. I think, you know... I hear amazing things about it, uh, mm -hmm. and you know it's, a, it's definitely an experience. So, yes, definitely. Uh, so with that, I think that is all the emails and voicemails. Man, Mike's uh, we're skipping because they didn't work out apparently. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he was trying to get. Apparently, they were doing the uh, the Fandango thing, uh, like uh, I think he said on a bus or something. Okay. Take me out, guys. Go for it. Uh, so with that, guys, we're going to go to our first uh, interview slash break. Of course, I was at WrestleCon. We have plenty of interviews uh, that we'll be uh, sharing with you over the 
uh, coming weeks, including ones that we're arranging uh, right now with other people that we talked to we did not get on camera uh, just yet. Um, but we want to have longer conversations with them anyways about some of these things. Uh, but first up here is a great conversation we had I, I had with uh, Blue Meanie, uh, including asking a question about something that came up on the show uh, a few years ago, actually, with a friend of the show, Eric Ecstasy. So here, here's to me at WrestleCon. What's up, guys? Wrestling Mayhem Show. Sorg again with the one-man interviews. I have no cameraman. This is my hand. This is how far I can get away. Look who I found here. Stroll cameraman through. and girlfriend. And, well, it's a long weekend. Well, Don't tell my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Take my wife, please. Uh, She's very nice and appro approves of my wrestling shows and, and, and coming along. And your, your habits. My habits. My habits, you, you know. Support your wrestling habit. So we're here at the WrestleCon. I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast. Uh... Seeing some old friends, it's like a high school reunion. Uh, you know, uh, you know, and I, you know, I had more fun here than I did in high school. So uh, I don't remember bleeding as much in high school. No, but uh, I probably should have. You know, just to get some sympathy. You know, get some better grades. But uh, no, I mean, it's great to meet the fans. I'm here with the uh, folks from BarbarCity.com, uh, the ECW documentary. Uh, and I'm here checking out, you know, the fine folks with the Montreal Theory. I'm definitely going to check out their documentary. I'm a big fan about. I'm a big fan of documentaries, uh, and what, you know, the, no matter, I'm just jet documentaries in, in general. It could be about anything, and I'll, and I'll be uh, sucked into the screen and watching. Uh, so uh, I'm here doing that with these fine folks, uh, meeting the great fans, doing a lot of good people watching. You know, because I'm a people watcher. And I'll, I can easily go to a, a mall, sit on a bench, and just watch people for a good two or three hours and be highly entertained. It's, ama it's, it's even better than a con like this. Yeah, it's amazing to watch people do stuff when they don't think they're being watched. You know, uh, which resulted in several restraining orders, but I can't talk about that on camera. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good, man. I'm having fun. I'm wrestling, doing movies. Just did the Jerry Lynn retirement show, which went well, which... That show was everything independent wrestling should be. You know, the boys showed up, had a great time. Everybody got paid. Everybody wrestled. The house was sold out. Nice. And everybody went home happy. And, I'm, you know, I'm still buzzing from uh, the Jerry Lynn retirement show. I have to ask because we witnessed the uh, New Jack retirement last night, and he performed a rap song afterwards. Uh, did Jerry Lynn break out in, well, you know, Jerry Lynn, of course, Jerry Lynn we know is into the heavy metal. Uh, did he break out uh, with his uh, new band announcement as well? No, uh, uh, Jerry didn't break out in that rap. I tried to get it. Jerry has a very good uh, church lady dance. Uh, if you've ever seen it, I think he's okay. done it. I think he's done it in IWA Mid South with Chris Hero. Okay. But you know, just I tried to get him to do one last uh, church lady dance. Didn't work out. But what did happen was uh, a lot of love. Uh, we all came to the ring. We all took him up on our shoulders like Rudy. Uh, and you know, he, he, he said a farewell speech, and a few people, you know, praised him with, and deservingly gave him his praise because the man is too good for his own good, you know. And uh, he paid his dues, and you know, he earned the respect of the boys, and he respect, earned the respect of the fans, and he's one of the true good guys, you know. He's he's a, he's almost like a steamboat type where I can't see the guy ever being healed, or I can't see anybody ever hating Jerry Lynn. But uh, I'm honored that he asked me to be on the show. I mean, there's only a few shots, you know, spots you can have on a retirement show, and I'm very fortunate that he asked me, you know, uh, because I've respected him his whole career and I followed his whole career. So excellent. Now I have to ask: we had some, we've had a few people on the show here. Do you recall an Eric Ecstasy out of Pittsburgh? Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's a story. I want to see if we can corroborate it here. I think, uh, I do think you know where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. This is, uh, well, I believe it was Still City WrestleFest a few years ago. You had a match with him. For That's cystic fibrosis? Show? Yeah, yeah. For, for, for cystic fibrosis. Exactly, exactly. So it was good for, for a good cause. Okay, you know. Uh, so I, I understand the match went short for some reason. Uh... I pooped my pants. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's cool if you poop your pants. Like we learned from, from Billy Madison, right? Well, it wasn't the first time either, okay. but I mean, uh, these things happen. I mean, think people think wrestling's fake, you know. You, you hit a mat and it feels like, a, like an air cushion. And uh, sometimes it feels like 
he landed on a on your backyard deck, and uh, he took he I forget what he took me to the mat with, but uh, it killed. So, well, so there's no warning. Like there was no like pre -con pre condition. I felt great going into that match. I thought we were going to have an excellent match, and then uh, I took a bump and I took a dump, and uh, shit happens. <laughs> there you go. And also, I have to point out, he's got this wonderful shirt here. I know we have some big fans of the uh, 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 Magnum TA. Yeah. I'm reading it backwards so it's in the camera, so it's kind of messing with me. I'm like, ah, that's not you right. Fix it in post. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, so, so, so you're a big fan of the... Uh, are you a big fan of the mustache? Oh, the porn stash? Absolutely. I mean, that was the 80s. I mean, dude, dude had, to, had it going on, man. So... Uh, Magnum was a phenomenal talent, and it's a shame you know, how short his career was cut. Um, but uh, he seems to be doing well now. He seems, I see him on Facebook all the time, and he seems like he's with good people. Good. And uh, I'm happy. You know, if he's happy, I'm happy. You know, because the guy gave me years of entertainment. You know, he was phenomenal. Excellent. I got one last question here. This is the big question we ask it of everybody. A little bit of a personality test here. So, so Blue Mini. If you were a vegetable, any vegetable, which one would it be? I am a vegetable. But uh, if I could be any vegetable, uh, I would be a broccoli. Because broccoli is fuel for great farts. And, you know, I, know I, I hate to turn this interview. I mean, this has been a very in-the-bathroom type interview, but... I mean, you asked. You asked. Hey, it's where it goes. It's a, the show always ends up that way, right? I didn't think I was going to be talking about this stuff going into the interview. This certainly isn't Barbara Walters type stuff here, but no, it's good. Yeah, yeah. If I was, and broccoli's nutritious. You know, greens are good. So I'd be a broccoli. Excellent. Where can people check you out? Check me out on Twitter at uh, twittercom slash Meanie, T H E E Blue Meanie. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash brian.heffron, H-E-F-F-R-O-N, and uh, just click uh, the uh, subscribe part. So I'm already past, like, I hate that they have limits, yeah. but I'm past the limit, so you can hit, click subscribe and you can follow me on uh, Facebook and Twitter. So it's all good. All right. Thanks a lot. Blue Mini joining us on WrestleZone. Thank you. Hey guys, we're back again. Check out that RWA DVD at uh, sorgatronmedia.com slash store uh, and all the other great stuff there, digital downloads and the like. And thank you very much to the Blue Meanie uh, for uh, sitting down with us and uh, talking and, and asking a very personal question. And I am glad after all these years I got a chance to to ask that of all questions. To the You're Blue right, Meanie. that real question is very personal. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, and it amazing, I did run into Eric Ecstasy that same day and let him know that that we clear the air on that. <laughs> uh, so with that, I think it's a perfect time to go to the Indie Minute. Hey, it's time for the Indie Minute, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and it was WrestleMania weekend, which, you know, WrestleMania is the exact opposite of independent wrestling. Uh, but that doesn't mean there was an independent wrestling this weekend. Actually, there was a shit ton of it uh, because of, as we mentioned before, WrestleCon. Uh, really, really great stuff. Like uh, Sorg mentioned, he was there uh, promoting the Montreal Theory uh, DVD uh, and getting uh, to uh, get his taste of WrestleCon. Sorg, what did you think of the whole event? Holy crap, it was a great event. Okay, now, 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 uh, you guys have been to Steel City Cons, uh, Comic Cons, and the, and the like, right? Correct. Everybody here, and you guys in the similar. audience, you know what I'm talking about, Mad Mike, with, uh, with, of course, New York uh, Comic Con, that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, you know that feeling where, and I, even, even like, you know, a little bit, I attribute, you know, something like together in each other's. Just like that idea that, like, you're in that place where everybody's on the same page, there's that common feel. And you get to see, like, you know, everything that goes around, the thing you love, in this case, pro wrestling, 
uh, and stuff you didn't even think you were going to have a chance to see. Mm-hmm. Um, as you saw, you know, probably from my pictures, uh, I, I was posting all weekend. I have a, a gallery up over on my Facebook. Probably I'll have it on Google Plus here soon too. Um, it just, just like stuff like seeing, like you know, it looking like aces and eights. We're going initi- to initiate William Regal. Um, uh, Tony, that I popped. I went crazy when you tweeted that. out <laughs> I sent that to everyone I knew. They I was like, everywhere. oh my god, guys. They were everywhere, but and just being surrounded, like Hacksaw Jim Duggan was at the table next to us. Tony Atlas took over when he had to take off to, to Fan Access. The next day, both of them were there. I was just seeing the reunions of of like you know uh, 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 Jake the Snake running up and down the aisle to prove that he can. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, just he looks fantastic. By the way, DDP Yoga, DDP Yoga. You know, they Feel were, the bang. You should have seen the line for the uh, free DDP Yoga session with uh, with DDP. It was it was oh, ridiculous. Oh, they were doing that. Uh, yeah, it was just it was just great stuff. Uh, seeing Bobby Heenan, uh, seeing uh, you know just just people just like just walking around like oh there's Mickey James. I mean I just I didn't get to see Warrior or Hogan even they weren't too far from me, but I saw the lines for them uh, or anything like that. You know I saw saw Bret Hart uh, Friday night at Pro Wrestling Syndicate. Um, you know stuff like that. It was just really cool just to be surrounded by that whole thing, so close and personal. You know, um, it, it, the boogeyman walking by and and, and picking on uh, Tony Atlas. You know, in full garb because they had a really cool uh, ticket you could get to get autographs of every all the really bad gimmicks, including Shock Maxter. Uh, they had Hurricane and, and Molly Holly there, uh, a, a Mantar. Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, it was just a tremendous, like one of the most amazing wrestling experiences. Like anything that you want to experience, everything outside of what WrestleMania represented was at this con. It felt like a comic con, uh, not like big, like New York city, but like steel city con, if it was done like, you know, more towards wrestling. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, meeting like a lot of like, uh, barbed wire city that blue meeting, I uh, mentioned, uh, find out about that documentary. Uh, finally get to see the trailer. I didn't know they had just put online for pro wrestling versus zombies that they were filming here around Pittsburgh with a lot of guys. We know, uh, that's really looking good. Um, nice. you know, just seeing these other projects that people are involved with, you know, other, like I saw some other kind of documentary projects that that were going on there, uh, seeing other promotions that were, that were advertising themselves that weren't the Chikaras and the shimmers and everything they were actually running, uh, hearing the actions here, the wrestling action a curtain away you know uh, uh the entire night was really cool um I, and and i would love to, i'd love to be there as an attendee too you know or, or at least get a ticket you know for some of those shows next time I, I get to go to something like this uh but knowing that there was like that cool like everything together it, it really was like everything that represented i think indie wrestling you know seeing all these guys uh uh just interact and everything you know um but yeah, I, I I don't know. I don't know where else to go from there. I have plenty. Of, I don't. Even, I can't even start with the stories. You know, uh, to, to, Tony Atlas uh, goes back to uh, going through. Dabrowski brought a bunch of basically. I say that he cleaned out his attic and was selling that stuff so he could make make some money outside of uh, you know what he owes for the DVDs we were putting out or whatever. Um, and sorry, I thought I heard a knock at the door. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, "What is going on?" There is somebody knocking at the door. Russell fan, take it. Okay. Oh no. Uh, well, speaking about uh, the stuff going down at WrestleCon, uh, like so, we mentioned there were a couple events that went on at WrestleCon. Uh, I think the big uh, news that came from the whole events part that came from it uh, was Chikara Pro's event. Uh, they drew their biggest crowd. Uh, in their like eleven year history, um, they drew over a thousand people, and that is insane uh, for not just Chikara but any real independent company. Like that is absolutely amazing. Uh, they put on an amazing event uh, with the main event of Mike Quackenbush and his mystery partner revealed to be Jush and Thunder Liger, uh, defeating Jigsaw, Jigsaw and the Shard. Uh, that was awesome. Also, Shimmer uh, had an awesome, awesome show uh, with a lot of great matches. Uh, Cheerleader and Melissa becoming the first ever two-time Shimmer champion, defeating Soraya Knight in a steel cage match, capping off their feud that has been running all throughout Shimmer and all throughout the wrestling world, uh, and tons of great female action uh, all throughout there uh both of those events i heard were awesome czw also did stuff five dollar wrestling uh dragon gate usa tons of other companies uh did events for WrestleCon, and and like i said you know it's it's great to see you know it's great to see people 
seeing the product that na- that normally wouldn't have seen it before. Uh, you know, just getting all those people together to see great professional wrestling uh, on this one stage with a lot of names and you know, awesome, just awesome, awesome wrestling. Um, but speaking of that, uh, uh, more events also did happen uh, throughout the uh, independent wrestling world during WrestleMania weekend. The big thing there was a lot of eye pay per views, uh, and therefore a lot of eye pay per view problems. And um, one of the big ones was Evolve Wrestling. Uh, they had their eye pay per view to cap off. Uh, I believe they had their uh, Evolve title tournament, uh, and they did have problems with their eye pay per view stream, which uh, was a problem in itself. But it also bled over to their live event. They had to sort of, you know, hold some stuff off, and you know, their event went longer than it was supposed to, uh, which caused their attendance to sort of draw down near the end because a lot of people that were at that Evolve show also wanted to make the Ring of Honor show that was uh, later. Uh, on later that night, so you know they lost a couple of attendances there. And Ring of Honor had a very big event uh, at the Hammerstein Ballroom uh, main event in a shocker, absolute shocker. Uh, Jay Briscoe uh, defeating Kevin Steen to become the Ring of Honor World Champion, holding his first ever singles world title. That's absolutely uh, amazing for Jay Briscoe. Um, but as uh, like I mentioned, the eye pay-per-view stuff, uh, their feed actually cut out for some people uh, during the end of the main event, which was a big thing. Um, and yeah, so there was definitely some problems there. And uh, they were a couple... Ring of Honor, I know Dragon Gate and Evolve were doing eye pay-per-views and they had some problems. The only one I think that from what I knew that didn't really have a problem with theirs was uh, Shimmer. Uh, Shimmer, I think, had a pretty flawless uh, eye pay-per-view. Um, and, you know, that's that's interesting. I mentioned before, you know, about eye pay-per-views and how it's a new market for people to sort of go into and, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know see – to get more eyes on their product. But, you know, sometimes – you know – there's been a lot of companies that have been having problems with you know, their eye pay per views. Uh, like I mentioned, Shimmer is the only one. This was their first eye pay per view, and they had a great one. I think the ones from Smart Mark Video, they've had very minimal problems, but some of the other ones have been having some problems. Uh, and it's interesting to, you know, it brings up the point of should you do eye pay per views, you know, uh, and, you know, present it, you know, in that way. I think, you know, and I've seen stuff from, uh, uh, Women Superstars at Censored, they did eye pay-per-views before they got uh, taken over by new management by uh, Beyond Wrestling. And the Beyond Wrestling people basically went out and say, we, want, we aren't doing eye pay-per-views for WSU until we know that the technology is exactly right to where we can do mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's, you know, I think that's an important thing. I think that's a good way to look at it, you know, like as much as you want to get more people's eyes on it, you have to make it right. You know, it is a product you have to put out there. Yeah, I, and I've been having this conversation too over uh, the course of the weekend. Like, kind of, I had this thought in my head before I even saw the problems. Uh, you know, I saw the, the the COO, I believe it was, of Ring of Honor having an apology from that uh, big pay per view. You know, and you're better, right? Oh, um, and just seeing the 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 number of people that had problems over the weekend. Because I mean, this is something I have been asked. You know, about doing eye pay per views, both from fans and from you know, m- you know management. I guess you could say uh, for for IWC about doing eye pay-per-views you know i would i would love to do like a super indie eye pay-per-view right mm-hmm. uh but you know as a producer you know i'm very concerned with quality you know and if i can't guarantee you guys aren't going to get it you know you know you're you're dropping 10 15 bucks you better get the stream you know mm-hmm. uh you, you part with your cash you better get the product and 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 outside of being wb tna and having a production truck with uh you know backups upon backups i think you have a lot of production people that don't have that kind of reliability experience because let's be honest like the people that with wrestling how many and not to say there aren't any out there that are like you know television truck ready um but a ring of honor definitely dumped down from getting that big hd net production truck you know out behind the ecw arena to let's do an eye pay-per-view um i don't know mm-hmm. what technologies they're using i saw the setup for national pro wrestling day and it looks uh not too much different than my desk here uh to be honest uh from the from the from the little bit i looked at not that i saw exactly what they had yeah um but, but I, and i do have to say smartmark video does from what i think has been doing the best job i think with eye pay-per-views mm-hmm. they've been doing it for a lot of companies they did it for national pro wrestling day they've done chikara they've done uh They've done National Pro Wrestling Day. They're doing AIW now. 
Mm-hmm. Like I, they, they have companies that do, and from what I know, the the problems that they've had with their IP reviews are very minimal. Yeah, and it depends on what kind of redundancy they they have. Have they? It, 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 there's a couple things that can happen here, and I'm going to get technical on this one. You have to make sure the internet, whatever internet you need to use, if you're using the builder, building internet, is the internet up to snuff? Oh, they're, oh, it, it's fast enough. We we downloaded this. It's like that's great. What's the upload speed? If you're in an area that has Comcast, like around here, your upda- upstate upload speeds are typically pitiful unless you're 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 you actively upgraded it, right? Uh, or DSO or whatever, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of times these are in kind of outer skirt areas. You know, so so maybe they don't have a good enough internet. I know some people say, "Oh, we use this uh, 3G device and everything." I'm like, "Really? How is that quality?" Well, it was kind of dark and a little bit blocky. I'm like, "Yeah, exactly. We're not doing that, right?" Yeah. Uh, you 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 have those problems, and, and sorry, the internet is not uh, consistent enough. You know, this is a whole discussion for Awesome Cast for you to hook up and say, you know, okay, I'm definitely going to have a reliable thing. There's too many points of failure versus if you're somebody like a WVTNA, you have a production truck that puts that up to a satellite and there's going to be backup upon backup on that. I can guarantee you that. When's the last time you saw Raw go off the air, right? Right. When's the last time you saw a pay-per-view go off the air? Yeah, there were problems with the stream, but there, there weren't problems with the actual feed getting out of that stadium to wherever it needs to be to distribute. It sounded like there were problems of that getting back to Verizon Fios, to the Xbox app, whatever the problem was. We can talk about that later. Um, this cements the fact that I do not want to do eye pay per views yeah. uh, as a producer. Um, and I think that anybody should really consider... Um, I, I think that hearing that about the Beyond Wrestling and WSU, good on them. Great on mm-hmm. them. I think that I think right now in that decision, they just proved to be the smartest people in indie wrestling. And and with WSU, uh, before they were taken, and this is personally what I think. Personally, before they were taken over by Beyond Wrestling, mm. they did not have the DVD quality to even be putting out eye pay per views. Yeah, and isn't it fascinating that the 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 people who started the company that was uh, we're going to do wrestling matches in a garage and put those out on DVD are the people that are up in quality. Good beyond, on Beyond, beyond Wrestling. Beyond Beyond is one of my favorites when it comes to production. They Good. have it down. Good. They are amazing with it. Um, I think them and Smartmark Video. I gotta say, Smartmark Video knows exactly what they're doing. I know you mentioned because I actually picked up some uh, some recent AIW DVDs, and they mm. for, for about mm. a year now have been doing th- through Smartmark. Smartmark That's has it. been making their DVDs, and the quality is phenomenal. It is so good. And that's the thing. You have to be confident. I think you have to be confident in your own DVD production before you can even think about going to high pay-per-view. And it has, your DVDs have to be amazing. Chikara has amazing uh, you know, HD video. They have like you know, th- you know, King of Trios. They always bust out like what? Like a day turnaround for their mm-hmm. DVDs? Mm-hmm. Like that's amazing. Exactly. Exactly, and that and that gives them the ability to you know do these eye pay per views because they are confident and they know you know what they're producing. Well, I tell you exactly what, how, how they're able to turn those around because previously, and I, and I know you know seeing like King of Trios in the past and other wrestling shows, they just go and film it and then they have to post edit it. That's why it took like two three weeks for them to try to get uh, the AIW show leading into the king of trios they were editing it the the second night like there that night still uh-huh. um i mean i think and there's that throwing it together you're, it's not going to be as good uh your switches aren't going to be as good and fluid but if you have somebody that's sitting there doing a live switch that's how my dvds get turned around so quick my dvds would come out quicker if this if my job was the wrestling dvds yeah you know um Take but, a- but typically and i and, and that's how i run things is i have backup on backup i have i have the guys are running tapes uh it's recording to my computer but that fails a lot so i also have it recording to a tape the the entire like master feed as a backup if i luck out all i have are a bunch of files that i pull together and i have a dvd put graphics on it we're good to go and it it, it, it would be a little bit but there's not much i would have to do to upgrade to a live graphical presentation basically i would need another computer uh to 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 manage the feed or maybe Mm -hmm. like some newer computers or something like that uh but but and and they have that and they have the proper equipment they've invested into it there's a lot of conversations this week of did you put money into the production did you put money into this thing happening you know uh 
it have again like you say the confidence for something like that smart mark is you know smart with things you know the first, earliest things i've seen with them are high production good ideas high production different different looks with the chikara and the podcast of gogo and that kind of stuff these guys know what the fuck they're doing mm-hmm. absolutely and, t- and taking advantage of, of distributions and, and channels that you know are not competition with WWE directly. So, mm-hmm. but, I think I th- definitely. Um, so hopefully, I, I we all hope. I think that it's going to be sorted out. Uh, you know, I like I said, uh, uh, WWE Live is one that was doing is doing a lot of iPay per view stuff. Like I said, I don't know what they're using. I don't know what their you know sort of production stuff is, and they're the ones that are sort of getting a lot of the problems. Uh, and Ring of Honor has mm-hmm. been having some problems as well. So hopefully that clears up. You know, because we all as wrestling fans, we want to see you know, you know, we want to see our iPay per views. So. Exactly. Um, that that uh, hopefully that will all clear up for them, and and, uh, and definitely, and then so that, that is something that I hope it does work. At. And I think this is this is the growing pains, right? Yeah. So, it'll, I think it'll I think it'll get better with time, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so the final thing that I do want to mention on the indie minute, uh, uh, unless Sorg, uh, do you have anything else to mention about WrestleCon? The uh, events? I guess uh, I can mention Pro Wrestling Syndicate. That was my first experience with them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Okay, uh, this is okay. The two thousand people there, right? So something's got to be right. Uh, oh yeah, it's one of those. Uh, I met, I talked a bit about VOW Vicious Outcast Wrestling, uh, mm-hmm. who by the way are running another show May eighth uh, down in I think it's Grindstone, PA. Uh, not that anybody as long knows as where it's the not hell that is. It's not, it's not, it's not Meadville, right? Yeah, don't book shows in Meadville, people. <laughs> <laughs> or we will at least we won't talk about them on the show. <laughs> uh, actually, we will be in a minute. But uh, oh yeah. But. Um, but no, no. It was um, a lot of names like holy crap. We had Hart, New Jack's uh, 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 retirement, Sabu, uh, Jake was just kind of hanging out, uh, uh, <laughs> Jushin Liger versus John Morrison, which was fantastic. Uh, Trent Beretta ver- Trent Beretta versus IWC alumni Alex Reynolds, which was tr- a tremendous match. Uh, it was an interesting mix of uh, great to see these these old guys. Great to see these guys that were just maybe recently in WWE doing cool stuff. Don't really cr- give a crap about your local talent. Uh, and oh. and there was 2,000 people there, and they had a great time. Definitely ran too long. Holy crap. Uh, I never <laughs> seen somebody, uh, a grandma that old, really interested in a New Jack match. Um, but, yeah. you know, that that's my general altogether uh, thing of it. Uh, and there's other problems with Pro Wrestling Syndicate that I know some other people are having. Um, but yeah, this isn't a show for you and me. This is a show for we can pack two thousand people in here, sell DVDs on the names. Da 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 da. They're yeah. doing fine. They're doing great business for that, you know. Um, so so there was that. You know, and, and it was it was really cool to see uh, what they were all about and uh, and, uh, and 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 everything. I wouldn't go out of my way to go to another one. <laughs> um, and this was probably a special case because it was WrestleMania week and they had so many people. Uh, but other than that. You know, yeah, uh, it was interesting. Very cool. Uh, and the final thing I want to talk about in a minute, we did mention IWC briefly, and IWC has a lot of stuff coming up this weekend. Two big events this weekend. Uh, one in Meadville, PA. Thank you. For- Aha! You're welcome. Uh, for Night of the Superstars 2, big event, as you see there, uh, Roddy Piper, Vader, Gold Dust, uh, Kid Cash, among others. Uh, it's going to be an awesome, awesome event. Uh, I believe the main event is John McChesney against Gold Dust, mm-hmm. uh, as well as a three main match between Anthony Nice, Kid Cash, and Michael Elgin. Uh, that's going to be very, very awesome. Uh, it's, it should be a really awesome time. That's like you mentioned, Saturday the, th- the 13th. It uh, should be uh, really awesome stuff. Uh, go to IWCWrestling.com for your tickets. And then the night after that, uh, Sunday, April 14th, uh, is Mountain State Madness uh, in Newell, uh, West Virginia. Uh, TNA star Zima Ion will be in action. Uh, it's the his main hometown. Event. Yeah. Uh, the main event, John McChesney defending the world title against Aiden Vale. Uh, Anthony Neese and Michael Elgin, Kid Cash, and friend of the show, Facade. Uh, it's going to be tons and tons of great action. Uh, so if you want to check them out, uh, go to uh, IWCWrestling.com. Also, uh, uh, that weekend of shows, I believe one of the matches for uh, Night of the Superstars also is Corey Hollis versus uh, 
Kyle Matthews. I'm really excited for that one. Corey Hollis has had some stuff with Ring of Honor. Uh, Kyle Matthews is sort of being a, becoming a big name in the Georgia area, and he's an amazing, amazing talent. Uh, and those two will also be wrestling in a six-man tag uh, at Mountain State Madness the next night. So that should be really, really awesome stuff. And uh, Sorgatron Media will be there. They'll be doing all the filming of that. Uh, like, uh, Oh, also, I, more stuff coming from Night of the Superstars. There will be a midget match. Uh, I remember yep. that because yep. Chachi is super, super excited about yeah, that. Yeah, he just tweeted about that like yesterday. I think I saw the tweet, right? That he was like, holy crap, I get to do that this weekend. So. <laughs> he better be – do you have to – as a cameraman, do you have to squat during a midget match? Because you have to maybe – No, I because he's like tall enough for the ring. It's a high ring in the IWC. Okay. It's, it's, a, well, it's a bigger this, ring. I, that's my that's my theory, um, but yeah. So like I mentioned, tickets are available at IWCWrestling dot com. Meadville uh, the thirteenth, Newell the fourteenth. Uh, mm-hmm. So go check them out. Go support IWC. Go support Sorbetron Media, and yeah, have some fun times Ooh. and let the uh, indie wrestling train from this past weekend roll on into this weekend. Uh, and that, my friends, is the indie minute for this week. There you go. And now we're going to go to, uh, well, first, before we check out Gold, as we typically would at this point, I got a very special interview. Oh, and after that, we also have a special thing checking out. Uh, there's going to be a series here that i uh, working with the Montreal Theory, uh, where we did a bunch of interviews at WrestleCon, a uh, uh, friend of the show, Joe Dombrowski, in this case, talking to the great Bill after of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter uh, and, and talking about his thoughts on the Montreal Screwjob and everything and, uh, you know, going into uh, watching the DVD and hope we hear some thoughts from him uh, later. We'll be talking to a bunch of uh, different people over the next few weeks in that series, including Paul London. Uh, we talked to, of course, Blue Meanie, uh, uh, Sammy Callahan. Uh, Johnny Gargano, uh, all kinds of people. Uh, so stay tuned. Oh, just incredible, of course. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But first, I know this. This is the this Who's is the one the Riz sword? is excited yeah. for. Riz, I think you need to do the introduction for this. Oh, one. Oh, this doesn't need an introduction. It, it's it. Sorry, went to WrestleCon and interviewed five dollar wrestling champion Freight Train. Enjoy. Hey guys, Sorg here for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, d- doing the one man interviews, and look who I found. I know the guys are going to enjoy this. Freight Chain from Five Dollar Wrestling. How you doing? I'm doing good. Excellent. So we're here at WrestleCon. How's the con been treating you? It's been treating me real good. I got to meet a lot of these fans and some of the old legends who I have never seen before, who I grew up watching and stuff. But wrestling car has been good to me this year. It was better than last year. Awesome, awesome. Of course, $5 Wrestling was last night. You guys had a late show last night. How'd that go? That went good. We had 400 people out there watching. Then they opened the doors up. People were running here like crazy, like it was a Michael Jackson concert. That's awesome. Now, I see, I've seen some tapes for $5 Wrestling. Is that the biggest crowd you guys have had for that? Yeah. 400 people was the best crowd we ever had. Awesome, awesome. So, um, so, 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 uh, uh, what, what, what's coming up? What's, what's com- coming up next for uh, for freight train and five dollar wrestling? I know in June I got to face Bit Donnie for my five dollar wrestling heavyweight title on I pay per view. Awesome. Um, I got one more question. This is somebody. This is something we ask everybody on the show. This is our big question. So answer it honestly. Tell me, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? I'd be a string bean. Why? Why a string bean? String beans good for you. you got vitamins and C in it. Then when you eat it, you'll find a little vitamin in it. So you're telling me that you're a very nutritious person? Yeah. Excellent. Where can people find you? You got anything online, Twitter or anything? They can go to Twitter and put up freight train for five dollar wrestling on Twitter. All right, thanks a lot for joining us, man. You welcome. You welcome. But yeah, but yeah, um mm-hmm. it was a good experience. I mean I I saw Christy Hemi get hit on by uh Everybody. Talk, talk man. See. I don't know how many more sex puns I can make. <laughs> I'm a dick sucker on a budget. Yep. Bitch. Yeah, Russell fan gets line of the night. I swear they're gonna kick me out of this dorm room. Hey, oh. hey guys, guys, if he tells us to go into a closet, don't. 
Are you sure? I thought I thought all wait wait aren't all dentists operating in the closet? We're here at WrestleCon in we're here in WrestleCon in Secaucus, New Jersey. My guest at this time, one of the most legendary journalists in wrestling history, Mr. Bill Apter. Bill, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you standing by my side. It is a pleasure and honor to be speaking with you and all your uh, uh, sending the message out to your millions and millions of viewers. We'll get there. But we're here in New Jersey. We're here at WrestleMania weekend, the biggest weekend of the year for the industry, to do some investigating and figure out what exactly everybody's Montreal theories are. Could Bret Hart have been in on it? Could it have been a work from day one? How much? To what degree? We have a panel of a dozen people spending hours talking about it, and it's only right that I present a copy here to Mr. Bill Apter. And to get Bill Apter's thoughts on this, because... Do you, do you take credit card, or...? We do take credit card, but you don't have to pay for that. You don't have to... Really? No. Thank Complimentary on the house. Thank you so much. I think you've earned it after all of us have grown up with you, with the Apter mags. I may by give the you... Way, by the way, I thank you for saying that, but I was one guy on a team of dozens of people that put that magazine together, but I was the guy out in the front lines. So I should, I should have copies for, like, Matt Brock and Liz Hunter and everybody else? Well, at least for Stu Sachs and Craig Peters and Brandy Mankiewicz and Dan Shockett, who's no longer with us. He uh, died at a very young age of uh, cancer. Certainly a great publication. Their, their memories will be with us for a long, long time. First bad guy reporter. There you go. After his passing, Eddie Elner took that call. Some people may consider me a bad guy reporter based on some of the subject matter in here, but you have an opinion. You have your own theory. What is your theory on Montreal? First, I'll say it in my Bret Hart imitation. You know, they said to me... No, that's it. My opinion from that day on was who was in on it. My Totally non-educated. Nobody told me this. I think that WWE was in a bad financial state at that time, and they had to lose Bret Hart. And I think, again, my opinion, that all the people involved in that knew that that was going to take place. Fits like a perfect story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my, that's my opinion. I could be 100% wrong. I could be 50% wrong. But that's my opinion. There's a lot of other people that, that agree with you, though, and one of them that we talk about briefly on this DVD is Jerry the King Lawler. We have some footage from an interview that he did, and, and it's very interesting because I'm sure you were covering back in the day when something similar happened with Jerry Lawler and the late great Andy Kaufman. Uh, well, I was. do you know that I was the guy who put them together? I, I did not know, know that. You did not know that. So Andy Kaufman used to come to... Uh, the garden on uh, the once a month Monday nights, and Vince McMahon Sr. didn't want him involved at all. He was so anti-Hollywood back then still, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he came over to me. He knew who I was, Andy Kaufman. And after the matches, he came back to my apartment on the subway. This is when he was a big star on Taxi. And people were talking to him. And that night at about 1 a.m. in the morning, I said, you know what? I got a friend in Memphis, they're way ahead of the curve. His name is Jerry Lawler. I'm going to call him. He says, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. So he's a wrestler. He's just getting up. He's just coming in. So we called him. They got on the phone. And that's how everything started. In all the books on Jerry Lawler, I'm credited with that. Tremendous. Well, certainly you've been very instrumental in some major, major incidents in pro wrestling. And Absolutely. And, and uh, thank you very much, Montreal. the Montreal Theory. The Montreal Theory. And I'm going to go home and check this out. And you can check it out on MontrealTheory.com. Purchase your copy, DVD, or digital download, and let us know your theory, because now you know Bill Apters. Yeah, what, what is your theory? Hmm. Hey guys, Mayhem Show. Uh, thank you very much first for a wonderful interview by the Freight Train. Is it the Freight Train, Riz? It, it doesn't matter. It, no, no. Okay. Uh, it does. It doesn't. I don't think Freight Train knows what it what it is. <laughs> That's it, okay. It, I don't I, think anyways, anyways, anyways great, train. great day. I was there. Uh, have, a, have a chance to talk with him uh, and the great Bill after. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, uh, very honored to, to be able to uh, film that interview uh, and, and check out more with that with the Montreal Theory Montreal Theory dot com. Uh, so now is that time uh, for Remember When, and you would think, you would think that uh, we would do some kind of WrestleMania memory or WrestleMania over, over Raw memory, but instead we're going to remember when...
we're going to remember. Uh, yeah, of course, after last night, I think theme musics have proven more important than they ever have. With the crowd participation, with the Fandango theme. that we, I saw a video today of them doing that on the way to the New Jersey transit stop. A crowd of people still singing. Videos mm -hmm. of them still in the hallway singing, leaving the arena. There was reports that in the parking lot, they were blowing their horns to the theme. <laughs> I wish I was making that up. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I believe it. I believe it. Uh, I, 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 the rumor has it that Mad Mike is getting his IBM fellows to sing along with him, even though they're not wrestling fans, but they do like to sing over there at IBM. Um, <laughs> cause what else are you going to do? Well, there, there's a story behind that. I'll share with you off air. Uh, oh, okay. it's not for the show. Uh, <laughs> it's too technology based. Uh, but, 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 but seriously, like what is a memorable theme that just still sticks with you? You think is like the, that's, that's the theme. Uh, what do you think? You got one, Riz? I do. Okay. Is it freight trains? No. <laughs> that, even though that is, that is a memorable, uh, entrance theme. Mm -hmm. It is, but it is actually just come on, ride that train. <laughs> no. but, but the one I'm thinking of is when Paul Orndorff was in the WCW and he just came out to the opera singing he's wonderful he's Mr. Wonderful over and over again that just that that he's, wow. he wasn't a good wrestler back when I saw him but he that music in his character and WCW was pretty cool. And the, the, the theme music was catchy as all hell. Nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure it just says, Mr. Wonderful, you're wonderful. Uh, yeah. It, 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 it's, it, it catches you, even though, you know, it, it's not really that good of a song, but it's catchy. Mm. And that's the thing we're trying to get here. That's okay. what I like. Like, awesome. catchy stuff. What about you, WrestleFan? You know, Sor, you asked me that question, uh, and I thought of one. Um, now, like you guys know, I'm a young wrestling fan, but when I started watching wrestling, I tried to look at a lot of the older stuff. And I remember one of my ways of doing that was buying old wrestling video games. Um, and, and, like, old WWF stuff and, you know, just stuff like that. Um, and uh, the first theme that I remember hearing as a kid that like caught my attention, like really like zoned in on my attention and like got into my brain, uh, was the theme by, um, the, re uh, the no longer with us, um, uh, the one and only test. <laughs> uh, because you don't remember the test theme song. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, you, you have, uh, Assumably, some you know younger woman of sorts uh, saying uh, this. This is a test. 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 This is a test. Over and over again. Uh, and then there it is. And that's my favorite part. <laughs> the gibberish uh, chorus line is my favorite part because I could never figure out what it was. Amazing. Yeah. Still don't know. Still have no clue what he's saying. But it, it's it, it. Like I said, it got ingrained in me, and I tried to come up with new phrases for it as a child, and I just I I d could never figure out what it was. So that's the one that sticks out to me as the craziest entrance thing. Awesome. What about you, LB? Well, uh, I do want to throw out an, an interesting bit of business about tests real quick um the raw theme it was a for a short period of time the raw theme was across the nation by theory of a dead man oh, I think, for a long like time that. for no it, it was um ah crap union underground union underground that was it yeah um i i'm 90 percent sure on this but the theme that theme was originally for test because oh. at one point during the song if you listen to the full song they're, they just start chanting test over and over and over and over. Um, and I don't know what the fuck that's about. <laughs> anyway, um, I have two. Uh, first off. Yeah. Oh, that one? Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it's just got you pumped up. Yeah, it was a fucking Ooh. awesome Yeah, song. there's a video had ladies like helping each other. Let's get it out. I also, I also have the, I think the only Union Underground CD, uh, and it's it's pretty good too. It so. is good, yeah. There was another song of theirs that I loved. Anyway, it's not important. Um, first, I want to give honorable mention to a song that was ruined by a tragic event. Chris Benoit's theme song done by Our Lady Peace was oh. awesome. Ooh, I love that one. It was so good. And no wrestling fan can listen to it now because it brings up terrible, terrible things. Um, that being said, also uh, in up, the – uh, What? Yeah. You never usually this heard part. this part, though. Yeah, this yeah. is the intro. <laughs> Which it was before it, it was just this, and then like Our Lady Peace had a chance to remake it. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it like the Ruthless Aggression album that all this happened on? I believe so. Uh, well, wait, 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 wait. It was, yeah, it was Ruthless Aggression, and then what was the one with all the rap versions? Uh, I think that oh, one was I just that. that one was just aggression. When they had yeah. like Run DMC do the DX theme, and and <laughs> and there was a uh, uh, there was another rap version of No Chance in Hell, uh, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But, but that is not my pick. I think this might have been also from the Ruthless Aggression theme, but my, my favorite uh, entrance theme, and I would uh, fucking rock out to this in my car and just destroy speakers with it, was Kane's entrance theme uh, oh. when it was done by Finger Eleven. And the name of the song was Slow Chemical. Mm. And I had a, I had a mix of it where it started with that big explosion noise of Kane's fire just popping out of nowhere. Oh my god, so good. Do you have it? Uh, hold on, Phil. Yep. I need a little <laughs> longer. <laughs> it was just phenomenal. I remember driving around in the car with uh, with V Rock um, and just rocking out to that. God, that was such a. It's, it's another song. It's a lot like um, like Across oh, the Nation. Just getting weird. pumped up. It was ridiculous. Oh. No, Maybe. not yet. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Yeah, Kane's had a cup one. I think that's one of my personal favorites. There are always like variations though, and yeah, I was bummed when they went. Yeah, there. that's it. Yes. But it, and again, basically like the same thing, but it just like cuts in the lyrics. Yeah, I was bummed when they went back to the old organ. Um, we got from uh, Missy here in the studio hanging out. Uh, Break the Walls Down by Jericho or uh, The Undertaker, Bell You know, I gotta say, I'm a fan, uh, did not my pick, but I'm a fan of the, uh, remember the guitar version of The Undertaker theme they did, like, in the late 90s? You mean Roland? Limp Bizkit? No, 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 it was the, it was the, <laughs> no one, no. no one chooses Limp Bizkit. It was Biscuit. the Bell but there was, like, a guitar version of The Undertaker music. Side note, uh, side note Instead of that, the organ. This is sort of related. Uh, I had the pleasure uh, this past Saturday to attend an MGK concert in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, and for some reason, he did a rendition of Roland. Uh, and I was like, holy Rookie. shit, that's the song I know. Wow, and then I realized, song. oh my god, it's Limp Biscuit. Why am I so excited? Russell fan, did you get roofied again? <laughs> no, I didn't. All right, I think this is it. I didn't get any vodka on me either. <laughs> Wait. Then it goes into a. Then there's like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. That was like a yeah. WWF Volume Three kind of thing. This is a the Ministry of Darkness game. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is Ministry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those were the days. Uh, my my pick. Well, like, you know, I, I generally I I'm a big fan. I every time Jericho comes out, especially at the live shows, I am singing along to that. You know, I, I, I what's been around for so long. I love the the no chance in hell. I love the you know the test. Like something about that late '90s era. They're doing such cool stuff. Uh, I am a fan of anything H Blocks did as a theme. Do you know who that is? Look it up. Don't get their album. Trust right. me. <laughs> um, is, is, it, is it something I don't know because I'm not old enough, or is it something I don't know because they weren't popular? <laughs> um, nobody knew them oh. as H Blocks because because they were just the, the the band that did a lot of themes, including. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait! I need to put more than just their name. I need to actually put theme song. 
Uh, let's do the 1997 version. And mm -hmm. and this is the original, actually. Uh, uh, this is the original Titan Tron. So uh, as soon as this loads here, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But I still, uh, when this builds up, I just want to kick somebody in the face. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And like the long version and then the video, uh, it was like, it was so 90s. Because you had like the dancing ladies, just like the early Chris, Chris Jericho one, right? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know why this isn't loading. Stupid. But if we're going, we're, if we're going that route. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't like him as a human being, <laughs> um, Matt uh, Matt Hardy slap a tornado. It's Monster Magnet. You gotta Hardy. love the Monster yeah. Magnet. Monster Magnet. Monster Magnet. Oh, dude, I have a Monster Magnet channel on my Pandora. It's Monster amazing. Monster Magnet. Oh. That, that theme, that, that entrance theme for him was epic. Dude. He, on the other course, uh, on the other hand, was uh, not. <laughs> yeah, then, then there was, but that was you know at the time like we loved uh, Matt V One, right? Yeah, I mean, well, that, that was, was, that was that, great. Was that V One or was that a little bit after V One? Uh, uh, I think it was during V One actually. Yeah, so that was that was I, during. And I felt like that was the I will not die Matt Hardy time. No, 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 no. no. That, that was that was that was right after the load up screen. Yeah. Oh, uh, loading yeah. screen Matt Hardy was a really Loading cool screen game. Matt Hardy was everything I wanted in a Matt Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are all any, fans any of V1. Point. We're not a fan of the V2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and whatever. Um, although he looks like he looks like he's going to be hilarious in that zombie movie uh, yeah. from the trailer. Uh I'm sorry. He, he does. Does he like chase j zombies around and shoot them with guns? Because I that's how he thinks he should handle ghosts in your house. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But we could go on for a he's, from, hey, uh, he's from, from the south. By ghosts, he means black people. <laughs> oh. Wow, well, that's probably wow. not wrong. I don't like the rules. He's a fucking meth addict. What do you want from me? <laughs> oh, we're talking about Matt Hardy. I thought we were talking about yeah. Russell fan. Uh, corporate no, ministry I don't, of I don't, I don't ghost because I'm not a no, fucking no, idiot. Not talking about Russell fan. Corporate He's ministry. A, I'm from Bobby F J Town. I remember buying a cassette tape at a Johnstown house show for two themes: Razor Ramon and Tatanka. Yee 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 yee. Uh, H Block Stone Cold theme. I don't remember that one. Um, oh hell yeah. Hammer. Uh, what? Oh, wait, wait, Power Driver. Power Driver, Power Driver, the album. Just uh, give me the whole thing, right? Yeah, no, Power Driver. Just wasn't that Coco? Coke. Yes, it was. Coco, yes, beware. Was Coco Power beware. Driver. There you go. Uh, for uh, no, that's not right. They're still talking about Russell Fan being sacrificed. Uh, <laughs> they didn't stop. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Shit got dark. Oh, uh, uh, man, Mike says, uh, here comes the axe, here comes the smasher. Big fan of the, I, I rocked out to the de demolition theme myself uh, as a kid. Uh, can we, can we, can anybody agree? Does anybody not, anybody other than Russell fan that was around for this era uh, not get a chill anytime they hear uh, Real American? I do. You do? Yeah, I a little do. bit. You do? A little bit. I mean, <coughs> I mean, like, 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 I mean, if, 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 I yeah, yeah, there's that. There's I that. do. I'll, I'll give you this. I do feel the reason that I'm not a huge Hulk Hogan fan was when I got into wrestling. It was that uh, what was the fucking uh, 2002 Hogan? What was it? The the lyrical like Mr. Uh, American, Mr. Uh, American Hendrix. Yeah, the uh, Hendrix it, one. Yeah, uh, it, Hogan could that... walk into Raw, SmackDown, I guess main events tomorrow with the real American theme, and I'll be like, Hulk Hogan, fuck yeah. You know, yeah. I will not everything. I will forget. There's a porn tape. I'll forget about the reality show. I'll forget about. Although I did, I did even have, even his TNA one's like a rip off of his NWO one. It is. It is. Yeah, that's all I do. NWO. But but WCW was horrible with that stuff too when they did themes. So and even worse with themes in the long run. Uh, I don't remember know. Remember what up, Mach? I don't oh, know. I've been turned on much. to uh, what was it? Uh, Slam Jam. <laughs> Where it was all the lyrical ones, where and they were all like, you know, the two cold Scorpio theme, the yeah. famous like two gold. It was like all that for like all their wrestlers. Yeah. It was that yeah. style of music. I don't know what is going on that somebody's trying to put in the chat room. Yeah, but why, it is, why are some videos is, working? It in is the chat not room like it's it's giving me like the Verizon. I can't find the screen. Oh um, no! So I don't know what you guys are doing in there, or maybe they broke something in Rumblefish. 
But uh, anyways, um, so hey, they, that's great. Uh, so let us know your theme. Let us know on Twitter and everything. If you guys listen to this after the fact, please tweet us at Mayhem Show. Drop it on our Facebook. Drop it on our Google good Plus. Time. Whatever your preference is. Good. No, 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 this is more <laughs> a social media effort. Let us know what's your favorite theme and why, and all that kind of stuff. Or email us social like. media. See us. Email us it. Good time. Good anyways, time. So now we're gonna go around. <laughs> Because I've been waiting for this. It's Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem, and he's he took a request this week. What? Right back. Hey guys, it's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Okay, I'm gonna get into the whole weekend in the email that I'm gonna send sword, but we have to talk about Raw last night, and um, I know. You guys are probably going to sing the Fandango theme song, which I have graciously written up on the board for you, so you can follow along with the bouncing words. Um, but I gotta tell you, it gets really annoying after the 50th or 60th time you hear it going into Penn Station. But um, yeah, so Raw last night, oh my god, Raw. Uh, the, the Raw Mania. Raw Mania, that's what I'm calling it. Raw Mania. Um, yeah, it was it was a really, 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 really fun show. Um, second cash in I've ever seen live. First was Chad the Shads, of course, back in two thousand five or six or whenever it was. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you saw Raw. You know how good it was. Um, I didn't watch Impact yet. I'm sure, I, I think I read the results last week or sometime before my WrestleMania extravaganza. The stuff happened. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to do the re- report on it tomorrow when I have time. And um, Impact actually looks good this week. Everyone should watch it. It should be a really good week for wrestling if you include this week's Impact. Um, so Mad Mike's Raw Stars of the Week. Fuck, where do I start? Um... We're going to go five stars this week. Five stars. Um, The fifth star would be for Wade Barrett because we love Wade Barrett here at the Mayhem Show. We love the Power Barrage. And um, him winning the IC title again kind of go overshadowed by everything else on the show. (laughs) But still, good to see him back with the IC belt, even though don't know why they have him drop it to Miz at Mania. But whatever. Um, Fourth star is for The Undertaker. The Undertaker being at Raw when someone who had a little bit of an ab tear didn't want to fucking show up. Fuck him. Fuck Roadblock. That's a cut on G.I. Joe 3. Um, and also, I will be posting pictures later on the Mayhem Show site, but Taker, Kane, and Daniel Bryan all walked out and did the, uh, the Undertaker turn back and then the raise the arm thing. It was actually pretty badass. Uh, third star will be for, um, well, you guys didn't see this on the show, but the ice cream guy. The ice cream guy. Yes, third star is going to someone who sells ice cream at the Izod Center. He, we all started chanting ice cream guy, ice cream guy. He was dancing like a motherfucking fool, and it was fantastic. It was one of the funniest things I've seen in a crowd probably ever. And I've seen a fake wrestling match between Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage during the Brock Lesnar-Goldberg fight. Um, second star goes to the crowd. Um, yeah, the crowd. Uh, God, I really did not want to see a Sheamus-Randy Orton match, but I didn't watch a single bit of it. I honestly didn't. I, except to see Randy Orton's reactions, because his reactions to the crowd were actually kind of funny. But ultimately, like, the crowd just took over that match. They really did, and it it made the match enjoyable. And the Thank You Big Show chant was fantastic. Um, And the first star, gee, I wonder who it's going to be. Dolph fucking Ziggler. Granted, should have happened to Mania. Going on record as saying that it should have happened to Mania. But it happened on my birthday. Happened while I was there at Raw. So I'm okay with it. Um, 
I'm just okay with Dolph being champ. That's what we wanted. If this leads to a triple threat feud, that's fine. If it leads to a singles feud with Del Rio, that's fine. It's already longer than his last title reign, which is really the most important thing. Well, that's it for the minute this week. Peace, bitches. Da dun 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 da 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 dun 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 da da. Hey, man, Mike, for that minute of mayhem, uh, <laughs> Soviet <laughs> Russia, YouTube buffers you. Uh, anyways, uh, and 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 all the other stuff that happened since we saw you last here in the show that you won't see. It's been nope. very busy. A lot of it. It's been very busy. It's been a very and mildly busy offensive. Merit of mayhem. Uh, only mildly offensive. So with that, let's get into. Uh, you know, we got so much. That we barely oh, got into WrestleMania. What? Oh, we got so much stuff. Uh, so uh, comments from the unwashed masses. Who wants to step in for Bobby here this week? I'll do it. All right, Mister Wrestle fan. Let me pull these bad boys up. Okay, it's comments from the unwashed masses from Bobby of J-Town. These are comments from the WWE official Facebook page. Uh, the first one, it was better how The Rock made it, commenting on the WWE title that Cena now has. Hmm. Okay. Uh, next one, if Ryback would win the championship in the future, he would be a boring champion representing he WWE. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Chachi wrote that second one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the third one. Ryback is a loser. He gets defeat in many matches. I'm sure very soon John Cena teach him how to give respect to the champions. C Nation is back. John Cena, you rock in WrestleMania. Two Zs. Two Zs on Rock. No mm-hmm. punctuation at all. There you go. Yep. And that was... Comments from the Unwashed Masses. So, all right. Let's talk about the weekend that was the Wrestle, the Mania. Oh, uh, my God. All, as I mentioned, I think uh, I, I want to go to all the WrestleManias now. It was uh, it live. It was, as Matt and Mike uh, talked about, it was an unforgettable experience. And uh, I've never been anywhere with that many people at the same time. Oh, <laughs> Holy crap. Um, uh, I went to a NASCAR event a couple times, and it's terrifying. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is a little scary. I mean, I've been to, like, you know, I've been to, like, events, you know, like, like you know, like the aforementioned Gathering of the Jungalos, Jungalos and stuff. And that's maybe 10,000 people. This was 80,000 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, it, but but it was awesome, you know. It, it, and again, we were like, you know, we were up in the nosebleeds. Yeah, we were up on that upper bowl behind the stage. Uh, when you look up and they have those fireworks out happening, like, you know, outside the stadium behind them. Yeah, that was right behind us. Um <laughs> That <laughs> gives you an that idea like there. Fun. But it, it was a blast. It was it was an absolute blast. And apparently, I had better uh, uh, vantage point than a lot of people that paid uh, ten times as much for their ticket. <laughs> Uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently, well, sword wins. Lol, I win. Lol, you know, you know uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I paid like seventy five dollars for my ticket, and there were people there like nine hundred thousand dollars. Was it? That were like had a pillar in their way. Nine, yeah, they just nine hundred thousand dollars. Nine hundred to a thousand dollars. Okay, there we go. <laughs> but I would say if you paid nine hundred thousand dollars. But like, altogether, I thought the show, like from my angle, I thought the show was like, oh wow, that was good. You know, um, they didn't seem <laughs> like there was anything weak. People were like, oh, it was predictable. It's like who eats WrestleMania, guys? Come on. Well, um, I thought it was good. Yeah, I thought the show was good. Actually, I thought it was the opposite of predictable. Really? Besides the besides the mains. Yeah. Oh my god, like Mark Henry winning? Like fucking goddamn yes. <laughs> I was so happy no. when that happened. I'm no, like, no, fucking no, no. Can you say that with some predictable someone? and makes you happy? <laughs> well, uh, mm. Fandango won. Uh one of the coolest things was when Undertaker won, mm-hmm. seeing everybody just explode in the stands. Mm-hmm. Just oh, like yeah. like people were standing up and high fiving, and the guys, the the Taker fans were pointing and yelling accusingly at the CM Punk fans that were chanting the entire night uh, oh. since about an hour before the pre-show started. Um, it was it was the most emotional, <coughs> holy crap scene I've ever seen. 
That match um, was probably the most amazing thing I've seen in a long time. Yeah, yeah, that was, it was that was pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, so it was it was pretty good. I felt like um, it was it was it was an all right WrestleMania, but it was I think it was downhill after Punk Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> felt like um, Triple H and Lesnar would have been great if they had done all the exact same things at twice the speed. <laughs> oh god yeah it was a lot of uh flopping around oh and the thing at the end where he put him in the kimura and then he would smash him on the steps he put him in the kimura and he'd smash him on the steps they should have done that 14 to 15 times because <laughs> <laughs> they weren't doing it, it enough 20 yeah. times tops whoa yeah. your, your whoa. mic's out dude oh. <laughs> um and then i think that rock cena match was just garbage. better Really? Garbage? Yeah, you're better, man. I, just, Listen, I don't I, think it was garbage. I, I, I think it was the exact same match from WrestleMania uh, uh, last year, and yeah, that match was slower. Was, eh. I think slower and more rest holds. I think like, I, I'm, I love John Cena. Yeah, right. I've turned the corner. I'm on his side. I think he does great work. I love how dedicated he is to wrestling. That was not a good match. No. Yeah, well, and yeah, you're absolutely right that it was slow because that's what happens when you do a shit ton of HGH in the late '90s. I think that's a it was a great match considering how somebody tore the muscles off of, off of his abdomen 15 minutes before it ended. That's true, and I will give him respect for that, and I completely understand him not being on Raw the next night because of that. But like I said, that's what happens when you do all those drugs in the '90s during your heyday, and you try to come back to wrestling. Yeah, that's well. You get hurt. You get hurt like that if you're not doing drugs, though. That's the thing. The well, rock. It's, it's it's not, it's it's kind of the bad. fact that about everybody in the three main events got injured. Yeah. How do you yeah, ever seen but a guy not in that seat. kind of match? Brock Lesnar got injured because he landed dumb. Yeah, and but, I didn't see what exactly he got concussed on. Uh, it was when uh, awesome it was when they went point. over the barricade and Triple H clotheslined him over. He landed right on his head. Ah, uh, that Sorg. sucks. Yes. Sorg. Yes. How long has it been since you've wrestled a match? Wrestled a match? In, yeah. In the backyard? Uh, yeah. Backyard ring, whatever. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's been a few years, right? Yeah. Go wrestle the main event at WrestleMania. You're going to fucking hurt yourself because you're out of practice. The Rock, <laughs> out of practice. But the Rock, Rock Lesnar, out of practice. But the, These okay. fucking part, they're fucking part-timers. They're out of practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did Jericho hurt himself? Did Fandango hurt himself? Did you know the people who have been wrestling consistently hurt themselves? That's true. That's true. And also, I, well, I, I think it's it's also a point that these guys were in the positions that they were, and and well, hey, well look, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, uh, Rock, Taker, all part timers. Yep. The same mm-hmm. percentage of part timers is the same percentage that got injured. Not the same because CM Punk got injured. Uh, that's but, true. That's but true. Still. But I mean, things happen. Uh, but I'm, I'm just saying, but st- you know, you're setting yourself up for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, the, the Rock and John Cena, you know, what do you think the match was good or whatever? Was very much simple. They didn't like do any crazy shit. It didn't need to be crazy. It didn't. Well, no, it, it didn't need to be. But I'd say just John it Cena. just needed to happen. Right, it but what I'm saying is the fact that they didn't John do any like really crazy shit and The Rock tore muscles off of his bones is not because they did crazy shit. It's because he hasn't been doing it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But to be just, fair, just, just if he had done a few months of DDP yoga leading up to WrestleMania, he would have been fine. Increase that flexibility, do a little stretch here, do a little stretch there, and he would have been fine. I think in, 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 in a completely related note, uh, AJ uh, just tweeted that Bill Goldberg has a DIY uh, show he uh, does. coming out where he's re- renovating people's garages. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Of course yes. he is. Why not? I'm saying. Um, but no, I thought the, the weirder part to me was like there's no America the Beautiful. There were no backstage segments at all it felt super rushed they didn't do any of that they cut jack swagger's entrance they cut a match at mania yeah Yeah. it's like but they showed us a lot of like video packages for a pay-per-view that we already bought like that was already here man yeah it it was like wow this is great but well every time they came up with like a scene or a rock uh promo like towards the beginning of the show like wow they're really getting out of this this out of the way early (laughs) <laughs> so, it like, became the joke, and and you know, but they also did they also did an hour long pre show where they just had one match. 
Yes. You know, it, you, they, they could have post show. They could have in a, in a post show. They could have put Damien and uh, Cody and the Bellas and the Funkadactyls and tons of funk on the pre-show. While I do appreciate the uh, combination of Kofi, Jim Ross, and Dusty Rhodes. Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, I mean, just Dusty Rose promoting in WrestleMania, I think, was just the most amazing part of the night. Uh, just about, mm-hmm. but but it was just weird. Um, and, and then just you know us breaking out uh, personally into our Dusty Rose impressions from there. Uh, but from between that, it we uh, yeah. <laughs> if you we. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. But no, I thought WrestleMania wait, 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 wait. was great. But also, what was the okay? Um, um, we had best entrance of the night went to Punk and Taker. Um, Triple H's was recycled from last year, and we had That's so great nothing scope. special for the entrances for our main event. Yeah, like well, last year, you, you know how bad that was last year. What was last we, year's? Last year was the uh, Tron Cycle Nobody Road. Oh yes, a, a <laughs> white boy bad. rapper. Yes, that no, 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 yeah, all this past those week. were bad because we don't give a shit about MGK and Flo, or Flo Rida. Rida. Yeah, we don't give a shit about MGK or Flo Rida, but you those do, were good you entrances. Saw... Yeah, it, it just the, the, the musical no. performances made it feel important last year. They didn't do that this year because I was, guess what? I was on it's board the Rock for the and John or... Cena for a title. I was on board for the Diddy retrospective, but I was born in the '80s, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, that that was my bathroom break, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, Speaking of bathroom breaks, dude, the the hands in the Undertaker's entrance—that was the best part. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah, that was the best part of any entrance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the oh, CM Punk coming out the living color was awesome. That, that was too. Cool. That was really, that was really great. great. I've never ever liked that song. What? I've hated. I never liked that song. The X used to play it constantly. Yes. And I just, piece of shit song. I never enjoyed that song until it was related to CM Punk mm-hmm. yeah because I think that, yeah. that like static thing at the beginning like whenever he interrupts somebody I think is the best thing mm-hmm. can we also know since we brought up Punk and also like the Lesnar stuff I think Paul Heyman was the MVP of the Triple H Lesnar match he's the like, MVP always seriously was, and every the match he was in. doing at ringside was so amazing I mm-hmm. want him to be inducted into the Hall of Fame he deserves it so much. He's not going to. He's not going to, but he deserves it so much. The 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 stuff he was telling, like the pep talk he was giving Punk throughout the match was absolutely amazing. And when Punk hit Taker with the urn and he collapsed and Punk did the cross arms uh, pin and he mm-hmm. kicked out, he Heyman looked so like – depressed and disheveled <laughs> like he was slumped up against the apron like so sad it was amazing mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah and, you know and i i made the comment of i i thought it was interesting that it felt like paul Heyman was kind of had his heenan family moment being involved in two main events with his mm-hmm. guys i also like, i also realized this that is paul Heyman's first ever wrestlemania no well one yep. he he announced one. He did announce one. Yes. But that's the first time him ever being involved in some way in the actual match at WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's got to be somewhere where he's been involved. Nope. Because sure. when Lesnar had his debut at Mania, Paul was already gone from him. Yeah. Wow. I can't believe that. Yeah. He's the only one he's really a manager of, huh? Mm-hmm. Or even GM. Well, he wasn't GM, was he? Wasn't he with the Big Show one at one point? Yeah, but big, but that wasn't that was uh, ECW not for Mania. That oh. was that was like ECW, and that all wrapped up about December to December <laughs> when that whole went under underground. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's you know again I I didn't see how it looked on TV or anything, but you know uh, maybe jaded by the experience and not jaded, but the other way. Watson. But uh, I thought it was a, it was a great WrestleMania. It felt big. Uh, it was it was everything I think that was advertised. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. great. I thought it was really really good. And I thought the end. As much as we can say the t- Cena Brock match was slow, I liked the respect that they showed at the ending. I thought that was a nice touch. Uh, the interesting part uh, from you know me, I'm the guy that goes to Raw and watch all the production monkeys all night, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, just seeing, realizing how much production they went to. I read an article uh, in one of the local. Uh, websites that talked about how it was more more production was put into that show than any rock concert that had been in that facility, right? 
Oh, I believe noticing it. Noticing things like that, I don't think even would would even come across on TV. Like they, I, I'm like you know, watching Mars, and I'm pretty sure the, what I saw on, Mar- on the on the screens were exactly what you guys got, uh, because they had everything, including the Twitter feed that scrolled at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> so, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, it, it, uh, stuff like the, the the fireworks going off around the circle, you know, like traveling around the circle while Triple H was there and realizing that you're not even seeing that. You just see sporadic fireworks in the background as they go, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing when uh, King came in and did his, you know, his fire spot in the middle of the ring, the way the lights came out from the ring and lit everything up as it went. Wow. Oh. Stuff to just you're not seeing on TV. That was just for us. You know, uh, there there were plenty of those little touches, big little touches like that, that just kind of blew my mind, like, you know, watching the thing the whole time, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, just just that it was just like the epitome of atmosphere as far as that goes. So and got me excited about more than the giant Snoopy out front. (laughs) <laughs> yes um and, and 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 i don't know is there anything else you want to touch guys want to touch on raw i think it's pretty by yeah by the numbers on the things to be excited about i think we touch on everything without being what do you what do you think about the fan thing what do you think is the cause of it what do you think you know why did it happen they were bored. They were just fucking Because they around. were bored out of their goddamn mind. Really? Yeah. It was a combination of being bored with the match and having a sense of humor. But but, but let's, let's go back to, like, these, this hap- This started early. This was building through. We had a sexual chocolate chant. If you watch the video, there's stuff I didn't realize that was going on early on in the night. Yeah. Um, and just seeing. And then I, I went back. I saw, of course, Ziggler happened. But I went back and watched the, uh, the Barrett win. And just seeing them just come unglued when the, the when both of those things happened, yeah, um, there there was an energy there. Uh, this is this is a enough like minded people got on the same page and in the same building in one night. Is See, what that's happened. the thing. We talk a lot about the different kinds of wrestling fans. I guess you could say more the internet fans or the or the wiser fans. I guess you could say yes. Um, those were the ones that tr- made the trip out to WrestleMania. Those are the and ones. Th- and therefore, those, those are, the ones- yeah, those are exactly the ones. The ones dedicated with, not only am I going to go to Access, and I'm going to go to the Hall of Fame, and I'm going to go freaking WrestleMania and probably tailgate my ass off all day, uh, and have I'm a backyard go- wrestling match right in the parking lot that I got to witness. Um, <laughs> I'm also, after all that insanity... I just need that little bit more wrestling. And those yeah. are the ones that got through and survived and decided they needed tickets for Monday Night Raw. It was their WrestleMania after party. Mm-hmm. It was. It was their, yeah. it was their I'm going to just let loose on this one. It and was. It happened, it happened last year. It mm-hmm. happened. Did it happen, did it happen last no, year? No, last year. But last year's, I think, was different. Last yeah, year last was year the they big just guest chant. Brian all day. Yeah, but that's yeah. because people were so no. upset about him only getting 18 seconds last year. That was year. the thing. That was the thing. But and th- they this made time... him a star, and they made it a thing that they had to latch on to. The reason they were singing Fandango's theme last night all the time was because they were bored out of their fucking minds by Randy Orton and Sheamus doing mm-hmm. this stupid, like, oh, we're going to do this poll thing. Oh, well, fuck you guys. We're going to do this match anyways. Yeah, and I think and I think it's just again the perfect storm of the most dedicated WWE fans were in that building. Yep. Ones who know who Mike Kyoto is, who Chu Chan his name, even though we haven't heard it in five years on WWE television. <laughs> the one you know, ones to say, I'm going to chant for Michael Cole. I'm going to chant sexual harassment, ah, Chocolate, cotton candy. It, Why not? It, it's also worth mentioning that they were encouraged in that first segment by John Cena because they were chanting sexual chocolate and he was like, they want to have sex with chocolate. Once someone who's loud knows that you're looking at them, they're going to be louder. Yes. And oh. that's the thing. That's the thing I've been having debates about with people. Uh, my debates have been like, oh, it was really rude of them to do that. Uh, if they are bored by it, just chant boring or do whatever. The oh, difference right. is – and I think, hold on, hold on, I think boring is even diff- worse. I know yeah, I agree. the different, but the difference is if they chant boring or chant whatever, the announcers can construe that. The announcers can write that off. They made it so the na- announcers and the ta- and to the point where the cameramen could not ignore it. Mm-hmm. 
Remember when Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler had that match one time and the whole crowd was chanting, let's go Ziggler, and Lawler plays it off going, oh, look at this crowd going, let's go Sheamus. Yeah, that's yeah well, not even, because, even that's how not because, many times? That's, wait, wait, that's wait. not because Lawler heard it wrong. It's because they want a certain reaction out of people and they will manufacture it any way they can. Yep, yep. Hey, uh, how many times he said, I, I can't make out what they're saying when they're like, we hear it's RVD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? <laughs> when they started standing for the announcers, they had to acknowledge it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Plus, JBL doesn't give a fuck about anything. And yeah, J- he just, JBL he was, was bored out of his mind the whole night. Exactly. And to hear his name chanted over and over again was the highlight of his year. Oh, yeah. You can see, you can see it in his face when he's just sitting there and, and everybody starts chanting for him. And, and I don't even know. And, like, and we, with, uh, one thing, I will from now on be watching Access or – they act, act active, uh, the in-between stuff, because one, the striker stuff is fucking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> we were watching that last night. You need to just, th- he, he's asking Twitter questions to Regal and uh, Gabriel and, and shit like that. Um, <laughs> and and uh, um, Mr. Um, Bricky guy. Uh, Brad, Brad Maddox. Maddox. Thank you. Brad Maddox. Um, uh, but they, they, I continue to watch that match. So I gotta see what this crowd's doing. And I don't. Even, did you guys see? Or uh, I think was, I, I didn't get a chance. JBL actually got up and acknowledged the crowd and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. but so. that's the thing. I, I think there's a di- there's a difference between how John Cena and guys guys like John Cena and JBL reacted, and guys like Lawler and Sheamus and Randy Orton reacted. Well, okay. Well, what, if you're, what, if Lawler, you're... what Lawler always does is, oh, this is bizarro world. world. These people were just weird. Yeah. And JBL was all like, I love this. This is fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, and then, but and that's their care. approach. He don't doesn't compare. care if he's hired or not. Or don't if Vince go- McMahon's happy with him. He'll just fucking do whatever he wants. Yeah. You want to fire him? Whatever. He's fucking rich. He'll go climb mountains again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But don't, exactly. Don't compare what Jerry Lawler does to what Randy Orton and Sheamus do. And also, if you're looking at Randy JBL, Orton and, and also Sheamus had to do a match. Exactly. They're trying to do but that. There's, there's a, they're but trying okay. to work. But okay. John Cena and I give they couldn't so much. Stand there and go, oh, they're chanting for JBL. Everybody stop what they're doing and look. But they weren't even, they were going through the motions as in to follow a script. When because John they, Cena, when they John have Cena to. heard the Fandango dance, he busted out his own little Fandango dance. Okay, wait, 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 wait. There's a difference. There's a difference. Oh, Are, doesn't I, treat Randy himself. Orton. Randy Orton is not a dancer. Sheamus is not a dancer. <laughs> oh, come on. Like fighter. Sheamus wasn't gonna bust. Couldn't bust out no, a dance. No. Is this is this really what no. the argument is? <laughs> yeah, no, Wrestle fan is getting dancing. mad about this. I'm, I'm not getting mad about to... it. I'm just saying that the people uh, do things in different ways. You're shouting. That's why I like John Cena is because he doesn't try to just go through the motions of a regular match and treat the crowd like they're idiots. He acknowledges it yeah. and he goes with it. But, but and no, just, and no one else knows no, how to work. But, but there was nothing that but, happened that fit in the context of the yeah. match. Okay, there was nothing for them to. Say. Were, what are they going to do? Point the at, only point thing at they JBL? were doing. They're, 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 you, okay, the crowd threw them off. Okay, yeah, the crowd became the story and threw them off. So they did go completely and through the. They had to go through the script because that match ended when the Big Show came out mm-hmm. and destroyed them on the on site. Mm-hmm. There was no, you know, oh, there, we can just ad lib here. There is a point or, A to the point B, and 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 Cena and, could do his stuff because there isn't anything happening. Yeah, there wasn't like. Oh, we had to go do this because this match is going to end this way, or anything like that. Because he's he's John Cena and he can do that. Although you did see, like on the Sheamus Orton, like expressions of what the fuck is going on here. Like especially with Orton, you just saw him just kind of look. At one point, he was in a hold and just started yelling, "Really?" Like when they were chanting like like Mike Michael Cole or something. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was just. I mean, they just couldn't. They they were trying to ignore him. Like, I gotta do this thing. I gotta do this thing. And that's just how they they went about it. <laughs> they could have gone off the script. They could have done something other. But they're probably like, we we got to get to this point. You know, Ray, I, oh, yeah. I, I got to remember this match. I, I I need I need to make sure I'm listening to this guy so we don't fuck each other up. That's how wrestling works. Okay, you know? that's I, that's I, true. I'll give you that. That's that's different that. than John Cena making a wisecrack in an interview. They're not trying to communicate, which is kind of funny when you think about that context but yeah. but that, that's that's it you know it, 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 and and if they can't directly feed off the crowd then they have to think about getting to the point b 
you know, that yeah. they needed to. And saying, yeah. holy crap, we have 20 minutes of time to fill, and we need to do something here, right? Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I see what you guys are saying, definitely. Yeah. I'm just saying I really appreciate John Cena for doing that. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sign, out, uh, sign, out also, sign out also with the whole script thing. Did anyone else see uh, during the Randy Orton Sheamus promo, Randy Orton having to stop his promo to ask Sheamus what his line was? I was looking away, but no, Missy pointed that out to me. Like really? That it was that bad. Like did it, did he actually like did you actually see? He, him? he stopped no. his promo mid sentence at like a weird part, and then like came in to talk to Sheamus for some reason, and he clearly mouthed the words, "What's my line?" And then Seamus told him what it was, and then listen, he continued with his promo. Listen, I've forgotten a line on stage before. That happens. But that's yeah. pro wrestling ad lib. I'm average, sorry, man. you can add with promo. It's WrestleMania weekend. Those guys Wrestle all went fan. out and partied last night. Indoor Let's see you do an Wrestle ounce fan. of cocaine and see if you remember your lines in the middle of the ring in front of 16,000 insane well, people point. the next day doing the Wrestle fucking fan. wave. Get 12 concussions and then let's go improv again. Yes. Randy Orton wrestled the <laughs> opening match. Do some steroids and then do improv. Yeah. Well, that's my point is that it was and Randy coke. Orton doing that. And like, drugs. what the fuck, Randy Orton? You just want an excuse to be mad at Randy Orton. Now. Yeah, that's the same thing he did with the with the Miz. Although I gotta say, can I say the best part was when I think it was Lawler saying that he wishes that that Orton probably wishes he could RKO sixteen thousand people at once. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a pretty good acknowledgement. All right, guys, I think we've been enough over this, and I, I it's I I, I think. I, I was amazed that people were pissed about last night. I'm amazed because I oh, think no. that was one of the best points of, of wrestling was the fans. Oh. The fans make it. And I love the video that Mad Mike posted in the Facebook of Cena <laughs> coming out and acknowledging that and saying, hey, you guys are the ones that make it. Fandango may have a key to not getting fired now because of last night's crowd. <laughs> Whether That's you true. say it's because of the so- more of the song than for him, uh, it doesn't uh, matter. Mm-hmm. That is a... That is memorable, and 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 I'm curious. I don't think any other crowds are going to be this coordinated, but I wonder if we're going to have a little bit of a sing along. Yeah, they uh, won't be. Is because that... I uh, I examined the SmackDown business, and uh, there were apparently some failed attempts. <laughs> um, but they'll but do it in Chicago. When, but when Fandango came out, they were fucking singing along to his uh, to his theme. Mm-hmm. They just need the oh, refresher. Oh. oh. They sang the lyrics to Mark Henry's theme. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, wait, 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 wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, I sang the lyrics to Mark Henry's theme in WrestleMania. Uh, I always sing th- the, the lyrics to, to uh, Jericho's themes to myself. And I look around, right. and there's a couple people. But this is the first time, again, people of the right mindset, of the dedicated mindset, of the uh, fucking insane New York City uh, wrestling mindset. Um there was enough people, people that all wanted to do it. Yeah, you know um, that it was visual, you know, and I guess audible that they were mentioning it. Um, that's great, you know. He's been doing it for how long? It's same with the Jericho music. You know it, you know. It's catchy, you know. Three Six yeah. Mafia kicks ass. What do you want? Mm-hmm. So with yep. that, I think we learned a lot. I think we got into a lot of what we learned. A little bit about uh, a little bit of psychology, sociology. Uh, <laughs> after last sociology. night's amazing experiment, um, I, I think I think that that was great. So tell me, guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week, Mister LB? I learned that there is nothing in the world that will split the population of wrestling fans like a mediocre match. <laughs> Cena and Rock didn't set the world on fire. They just put together a match. And every single person that I, every reaction I've read, every person I've talked to, it's either one or the other. Either they did real good or they did terrible. Split right down the middle. It's That's what much, I like. It was too much to live up to. Right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. What about that's, you, that's what I learned. Uh, Riz Defer. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, wrestle <laughs> fan. You already cut away. Yeah, wrestle fan. Fine. Uh, I learned that uh, AJ is probably one of the toughest chicks in the WWE because she took a uh, fist to the chest of uh, from Biggie Langston and entirely no sold it. It was pretty awesome. She also, like, right after her segment, made sure to go on Twitter and tweet, "Ow." <laughs> <laughs> I wondered what that was about. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> 
Miles and Riz. I learned that P. Diddy learned that WrestleMania started in 1995 in New York City. <laughs> uh, WrestleMania, WrestleMania in 1995 was WrestleMania 11, which was not in New York City. It was in Hartford, Connecticut. So, yeah. No. Hmm. Sorg? Um, geez, where do I start? <laughs> I learned I want to go to every WrestleMania from here on in, no matter how how hard that may be to accomplish. I uh, also learned I want to experience more of it. Um, and oh, you know what I learned? Uh, speaking of insane wrestle fan, wrestling fan, wrestle fan, <laughs> insane wrestle fan. Going into the venue, I, I'm like walking and it's the MetLife Central entrance, so I guess it's the main one uh, of the four. I see this big line. I'm looking around. I'm like, that's not the way in because I can just walk in right here. Am I cutting people? Is there a barrier that I'm not seeing? And there's just this huge line that's like wrapped around stuff and holy crap, hundreds, 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 hundreds of people, right? I'm like, all right, you know, then give more, much more thought to it. Why don't we you know, enjoy the show, blah, blah, blah. We came out uh, around, around about the same area. Like it was another exit right beside it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the fuck is this line doing here? The show's over. You know, it's still a giant line wrapped around this like kind of mini football field they have out there, right? Uh for like looks like it was for some kind of kick contest or something like that. And I like fuck up somebody. I'm like, guys, what what is this line for? Yeah, we're waiting to get into the WrestleMania store. Mm. Huh. They set up and I saw advertisements and emails for this. So yeah, that's that's where I was, <laughs> says, says Mike. <laughs> uh, yeah, they had set up like a big store of just WrestleMania merchandise, I guess. Uh, and everybody was in line to get into it. it hmm. The line was longer than to get into WrestleMania. And that's the thing. I, I, I uh, Like he said, like Lunchbox said with the mixture points of the Roxena match, I heard mixture points about that WrestleMania store. I also heard it was really, I heard it was really awesome and I heard it was super disappointing. The WrestleMania mm-hmm. store? Yeah. Uh, I, I guess. I guess you're like, they put wrestle. I don't know. I saw, found cool t shirts like this at the, the, you know, at the end of the night. Uh, you know, I didn't, I, I heard there were like cool, other cool ones. Like they had ones with like the, um, the subway numbers for WrestleMania mm-hmm. and everything. So, you know, and, uh, Mike was talking huh. about, but yeah, he says he went to the WrestleMania store on Saturday and it was awesome. And, and yeah, you don't want to do that on. WrestleMania day, but that's where yeah. everybody goes. So you know, <laughs> um, awesome guys. Thanks a lot. This has been an amazing show. <laughs> Thank you to our interviewees we had from WrestleCon, uh, including Blue Mini and uh, the Freight Train. Uh, go check out uh, more at, uh, coming up at MontrealTheory.com, of course. Uh, thank you, everybody else. Thank you, across New York and New Jersey. Thank you, everybody else at WrestleCon for making that amazing. And thank you to Tony Mamaluke, you know why. On that note, this is Sorg for the Mayhemers. We'll see you next week. Mayhem. Out. <sighs> just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the